Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It is July 25th, 2016. And here's a look at our top stories. Tonight, the DNC crowd turns against Bernie Sanders when he announces we must elect Hillary. And we have got to elect Hillary Clinton and Tim Kaine. Meanwhile, some celebrities show up to support Hillary Clinton, while others are there to protest. I, I really want to be on the right side of history, and this is a shot that we're not going to have again in my lifetime. Then, the mayor of a town in one of Mexico's most violent drug corridors was shot to death, and it's the second mayor killed in two days. Plus, a Texas sheriff deputy is shot dead at his own home. All that plus exclusive reports from the DNC. That's up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. We want to remind you that this Wednesday, or starting this Wednesday, we have Operation Sleeping Giant. It's our 28-hour broadcast, live broadcast. We can catch Alex, myself, uh, David Knight, Joe Biggs, Leanne McAdoo, all the reporters here. And we're going to bring you this historic moment of the Queen Hillary coronation. We all know it's a big dog and pony show. They pretty much had her picked as the winner beforehand, but they have to go through it the proper way and have the ballroom and all this other stuff get all the celebrities and everybody to come out. And we'll talk about that a little bit later in this broadcast, but definitely mark that broadcast on your calendar. You do not want to miss it. That's coming up this Wednesday. Now, as we're talking about the DNC, one of the big players in the Democratic Party, of course, is Bernie Sanders. Now, if you guys recall, it wasn't all that long ago, and we've shown you the videos and the montages of Bernie Sanders saying, Mrs. Clinton is unqualified. She's not fit to run this country. She's in bed with the big banks. And what does Bernie do? He comes out and burns his supporters by backing the very thing that he was supposed to be anti. He wasn't going to be like all these other politicians funded by the big banks. And now he's uh, backing Mrs. Clinton just to get the uh, Democratic Party in that, in that push. And a lot of people are saying, and I do agree with this, that Bernie was never a actual contender, or at least he never really wanted that top spot. His job, in my personal opinion, was to push the party just so far left to where he could get some of his talking points or some of his policies into the Clinton campaign. And I think he has done that in spectacular fashion. So let's go ahead and see how people reacted when Bernie came out and supported Mrs. Clinton. And we have got to elect Hillary Clinton and Tim Kaine. Following the release of nearly 20,000 internal DNC emails by WikiLeaks last week, Sanders supporters became outraged after evidence revealed that the DNC's efforts were to derail his campaign in favor of Clinton. So I'm sure Bernie Sanders knows this, that he pretty much uh, got the, uh, the business end, so to speak, of this whole Clinton charade. But, you know, he's back in the party regardless. I don't know, you know, they promised him or something. But regardless, he's going to back the DNC regardless because they don't want those votes to go to Trump. And it's really to the point where everybody's running this, anybody except Trump or, you know, never Hillary, whatever. It's like you just can't have one or the other. It's pretty much what it's come down to. And this is the problem we face every single election cycle. And I hate that it always comes to this. I tweet out of this thing. Uh, I guess a couple months ago, one of my rare tweets is this couple there sitting around and it was like, man, our candidate didn't make it. Now we just have to vote for the other person we don't believe in because they're in our party. And that's pretty much what happens every four years. You get down to the final two or three and you have to make this choice. Are you going to tow the party line? Are you going to go to the other party or are you just going to sit it out? And I'm personally going to sit it out. But um, many people aren't sitting at home when it comes to Bernie Sanders and also the whole Clinton campaign. But you know some people who aren't sitting on the bench are the celebrities. And, of course, you expect the big wigs to come out and support their favorite candidate. But not everybody is supporting Mrs. Clinton. Uh, one in particular, Rosario Dawson, the actress she's been in uh, Sin City and uh, Daredevil, many other projects as well. And she's a diehard Bernie Sanders supporter. And she's coming out to protest against uh, Clinton. Or against Clinton, yeah, that's accurate. And uh, basically the way Bernie has been treated, she feels that, Bernie has gotten a raw deal, as well as many other people feel that way. 
our crews out there at the DNC and pretty much everybody they meet is saying, no, we don't support Clinton. We don't want anything to do with Clinton. They're Bernie bros and Bernie gals, I guess, if that's the way you want to put it. They say, hey, Bernie should be the guy, not Mrs. Clinton. And many people recognize this. They recognize uh, how she had the superdelegates. Bernie never even stood a chance. She came in here. She slaughtered him in many different states because she had the superdelegates before he even had a chance to get on the ground and running. And uh, Rosario is just one of the people out there protesting. Also, actress Susan Sarandon. Uh, you have the supporters of Mrs. Clinton, which include Katy Perry, Lena Dunham, Lady Gaga, and Snoop, D-O-double-G. And it's always interesting to find out which uh, celebrities go for which candidates because it, it's getting to the point now, and maybe it's always been this way, but I'm just starting to notice it more. Uh, when you find out what celebrity is going for which candidate, it, you kind of start to feel a certain way about it. And I know some people, they take to the extreme if they find out, for example, uh, with this, uh, not Ben Affleck, what's the other guy? Jason Bourne, Matt Damon, yes, Matt Damon. Uh, he came out with these anti-gun comments. They're saying we need to have Australian type gun control. A lot of people are trying to distance themselves from him for making those comments. Now, ultimately, do I agree with his comment? No, but is he entitled to his opinion here in the United States of America? Of course he is. The same thing with uh, all these celebrities who support Mrs. Clinton and her various agendas. And we'll talk about some of that here in just a little bit. Now, let's talk about somebody who is definitely on board the Clinton machine. That is Washington Schultz. And she has been booed off stage by her own delegates. And that was the former DNC chair, or will be soon. She said she's going to step down at the end of the week because she wants to get on board with the uh, Clinton machine. Now, when you think about all the people who support Hillary Clinton, I'm very interested as to their reasons as to why they're doing this. A lot of people will say that she's the most qualified, and to be fair, she's been in politics or uh, in the arena of politics for quite some time. But you look at her track record, and I'm curious as to what her high points are. Uh, when I see Benghazi, which is very notable, uh, her lies about getting shot at by snipers, of course, the email scandal. And I don't think the email scandal is the biggest thing. It is a big deal because even the FBI said that she put uh, potential or uh, confidential information at risk. That in and of itself is a big deal. When you look at what's the general Petraeus who got in trouble for doing something very similar that was on a much lower scale. Uh, so you have all these things. I'm like, well, what exactly has she done in her career of politics that is just so enlightening? It's, it's like uh, quality over quantity or quantity over quality. I, I'm not exactly seeing the quality in her reign as a uh, political contender. Meanwhile, you got guys like Trump. Of course, I'm not supporting. But uh, if he says, if everything he says he plans to do, he talks a big game. But like I said, all it is is talk. You have campaign promises versus things they can actually do or things that they want to do. You got all these guys who'll tell you things just to get you to the polls. They may not have any intention of doing what they say. And also you have the guys who may have a big intention to do something, but is the Congress, is the Senate, are the American people going to get behind them and allow those things to happen? And that's a completely different story. So that's just one aspect of that. And as we talk about the Clinton crime syndicate, as I've heard them affectionately referred to, uh, one of the big platforms that Mrs. Clinton is running on is her anti-gun agenda. And we have a special report Coming up with James O'Keefe of Project Veritas a little bit later in our show. And we'll get more into that at that time. But uh, re briefly, I want to talk about the big thing that they say here is we need gun control because in other countries, we don't have all these attacks. And we, uh, we'll have some examples of that coming up, how that's a bunch of bull in just one second. But uh, briefly, they say that look at, look at UK or look at Australia or look at these other places where they have less guns and they have less gun violence. And I do agree for the simple fact, let's say cars, for example, right? If you have some remote village that doesn't have any cars, they're not going to have a lot of accidents. I understand that. The simple fact you have cars means you're going to have car accidents. But when they say that if you look at countries that don't have firearms and they're just this utopia of peace, that is not true. Because they'll say, look at the UK, look at this other place. And my retort to that is look at Mexico, where we have this Mexican mayor gunned down second one in two days. They've killed two mayors in two days, or shot two mayors in two days. 
And this is a mayor of a township that includes a known haven for drug traffickers in the southern Guerrero state. A spokesman for the southern Guerrero state said Sunday that gunmen blocked a highway just over the state line with pickup trucks and opened fire on the mayor's vehicle late Sunday. He said two federal officers serving as Soto's bodyguards were wounded in the attack. The leftist Democratic Revolution Party said that 75 mayors have been killed in the last decade. So, yeah, they'll show you uh, the crime statistics of the U.K. and all these other places. And to be perfectly clear, the U.K. and other places may have fewer gun deaths or, uh, or shootings and all that, but that doesn't mean they have less crime. You have uh, more muggings, more rapes, more home invasions. Uh, I showed you that story last week in Finland of people, of, of a guy who was protecting his home when somebody broke into his house with a gun and a baseball bat. He beat him up and chased him off with a knife, and then he went to jail for longer than the guys who broke into his house. So just because in foreign countries they don't have the same number of firearms that we do doesn't mean that they're these crime-free utopias. Because you see in Mexico, you get your cartels who have their guns courtesy of Fast and Furious. They get their guns through other means. Uh, they're out there killing each other in the streets. And it's not your good law-abiding citizens who are doing this. It's the cartel members. It's the gang members. And if you think about the gun-free zone, let's talk about the ones here in the United States of America. Your banks, your schools, your liquor stores, your Army recruitment facilities, for example. Um, you guys all saw the picture of the Army recruitment facility. It had bullet holes all around the big gun-free zone sign. So that just shows you how well these things work. And that's just one example of... Uh, with that article coming out of Mexico. Now, as we're talking about the military, let's talk about a different branch. Let's talk about the Navy and the waste of money that continues to go through big government contracts. And we see U.S. Navy's new $13 billion aircraft carrier can't fight. And this is the USS Gerald Ford is already two years behind schedule. And the Navy's newest aircraft carrier is facing more delays after the Pentagon's top weapons tester concluded the ship is still not ready for combat despite expectations it would be delivered to the fleet this September. And this reminds me of the other one they had. It was that, uh, it was like this big stealth looking, almost like the bat boat, <laughs> you know, this that the thing reminded me of. And it's like, no, nah, it, it got out to sea and it just didn't work. And it's like, well, we put all this money into it. It's like, well, tax dollars, people will pay for something else. And that's how they waste your money. And this is the thing when I always hear these guys talk about, we had a bigger military with more guns and more weapons and more Equipment, I'm like, if you had stuff that actually worked and you were using it for reasons that were, you know, good and justifiable, I wouldn't have an issue with that. But you build these big ships to go out to fight these preemptive wars, and then you want the American taxpayer to pick up the bill. Meanwhile, uh, every time something got hot, Obama was threatening not to pay the troops. I was like, well, that just blew my mind that people just let that happen and said nothing about it. Now, something I'm going to say something about is a Texas sheriff was recently shot and shot dead at his home. Now, this was a sheriff, he, was, he heard a noise in his backyard, he went out there to check it out. This is Round Rock, Texas, just a little bit north of Austin. But they say the shooting was not believed to be a targeted attack of a law enforcement officer. They just thought it was a routine robbery. The guy just came up on the wrong end of it. And, uh, of course, this isn't going to do anything to help the police relations going on here in the country. Currently, uh, because we've seen numerous reports, tweets, uh, various groups coming out saying target police, you know, shoot them while they're pumping gas or go to their uh, houses and target their children. All types of craziness. And these things just go on to fuel this thing. And it's just like I was talking about with somebody when you had the story last week of the autistic man who was walking around with his toy truck and his caregiver came out there. And people were calling the cops saying, hey, this guy had a gun. He had a toy truck. It's the same thing when people call the cops on people who carry umbrellas or other things. We've seen uh, schools get shut down because some kick showed up with an umbrella. And you have to realize that when you call the cops and you say somebody's out here with a gun, uh, their mentality is going to be completely different as if you called them and said, hey, my neighbor has loud music playing. Because when you say this guy has a gun, they're getting psyched up. They're trying to get mentally prepared. They're running through all these scenarios. And lo and behold, as in the case for the autistic man, an innocent man got shot because somebody chose to call the cops on a uh, an innocent person. Now, of course, if you see some guys sneaking around your neighborhood, you think they're sneaking around your neighborhood, you may take a look at them, but definitely know what you're doing before you pick up that phone and make that final call. Now, we've seen a series of attacks going on worldwide, but uh, this one we're going to focus on in Germany. This is one of many recent attacks, and this is a Syrian suicide bomber, and the attacker detonated a bomb backpack with metal shavings outside of a bar near Nuremberg, and he was a 27-year-old Syrian man 
who was denied asylum and turned away from a music festival. The blast left 15 people injured, three seriously, and it's the fourth bloody attack on German soil in the past week. And the man had previously been treated for psychiatric care. He had sworn his allegiance to ISIS. They found bomb-making materials in his apartment. And he was also due to be deported to Bulgaria. And these are the reasons why you have a board. I meet these people like, we don't, we don't need a board. I'm like, okay, I'm not trying to discriminate against people, but you have a border there for a reason. You have customs there for a reason, and this is the type of thing that you try to avoid. And very quickly, we talk about the censorship here in the United States of America, and now China is going so far as they're cracking down a news organizations, putting out information. You can read that at your leisure, but for right now, stay tuned right after this break for more special reports. Whether it's Russia or China, Iran or North Korea, more and more countries are using hacking to steal our information, to use it to their advantage, and we can't let that go on. Spoken just like a former Secretary of State that put national security in jeopardy for her own selfish gain. The Clinton campaign is pointing its crooked finger at the Russians as the culprits responsible for hacking the emails of the Democratic National Committee going all the way back to last summer. John Podesta, the chairman of the 2016 Hillary presidential campaign, claims Russian President Vladimir Putin is aiding Donald Trump's campaign because there is a kind of bromance going on. As if one more fabrication of reality could sway the narrative back to the Democrats' camp. And whether the Russians actually hacked the DNC emails or if it was the Romanian hacker claiming a responsibility known as Guccifer 2.0 really doesn't matter. What matters now is that the American people know how riddled with deception the DNC truly is. The political machinery propping up Hillary's campaign is quickly coming apart at the moment she should be dominating. The released 19,252 WikiLeaks internal emails that were hacked from seven officials at the DNC have served as a battering ram exposing an organization laden with deceptive practices on a monumental scale. Aside from the DNC's obvious favorability of Clinton over Sanders because of her gender and the jabs taken at Sanders' religion, the emails detail a manipulation of the media of grotesque proportions, relegating the DNC's mainstream media counterparts to nothing less than a larger propaganda organization. In this email, DNC's National Press Secretary Mark Postenbach says of a political reporter, Ken Vogel, Vogel gave me a story ahead of time before it goes to his editors as long as I didn't share it. Let me know if you see anything that's missing and I'll push back. Here's the BuzzFeed News Latino coverage editor, Adrian Carasquillo, introducing a top Democratic operative to BuzzFeed's communications director. Here are two DNC reps discussing sending out fake anti-Trump protesters at the RNC. It reads... Yes, but going forward, when our allies screw up and don't deliver bodies in time, we either send all our interns out there or we stay away from it. We don't want to own a bad picture. The fallout is extensive. Debbie Wasserman Schultz gave a speech to officially announce that she is stepping down as the DNC chair. That announcement was met with this. All right, everybody now, settle down. And at this point, the attempt to co-opt Bernie supporters would only anger those supporters more. My message is to Hillary Clinton, drop out. You have made a mockery of our democracy. Uh, she's part of the Clinton crime family, and they, she needs to be put in prison right away. Okay. What, what her and Debbie Wasserman Schultz did to, to all of the voters in this country is, is unfathomable, but they haven't put her in jail yet. Hillary Clinton's followers have no problem and they have denied election fraud. Hillary Clinton is in a syndicate that is controlling or attempting to control all of our government and no one seems to care about it. I care. I'm outraged. I want to defend my right to vote. I don't want government corruption. And now James O'Keefe of Project Veritas has gotten video evidence of the deception that fuels the DNC. But we can't say we want to ban you gotta, like, hide that. No, right, you gotta say that it's common sense and legislation. And then, they can switch them and ban them all. Well, and also, if we can get a majority... 
The DNC is turning out to be far more of a train wreck than expected. This is what happens when American providence is insulted for far too long. John Bound for Infowars.com. She's not a progressive candidate, and I don't intend to vote for her in November. Uh, I'll be voting for Jill Stein if the, the Democratic establishment has their way and proceeds with the coronation of Hillary, despite the will of the people being behind Bernie Sanders. How would you describe Hillary in your own words? I think I'll go with Donald Trump's on this one. She's crooked. Uh, she's part of the Clinton crime family, and they, she needs to be put in prison right away. Okay. What what her and Debbie Wasserman Schultz did to to all of the voters in this country is, is unfathomable. But they haven't put her in jail yet. Hillary Clinton's followers have no problem, and they have denied election fraud. Hillary Clinton is in a syndicate that is con controlling or attempting to control all of our government, and no one seems to care about it. I care. I'm outraged. I want to defend my right to vote. I don't want government corruption. She's the picture of corruption. I mean, you're probably about the most person I've interviewed today said the same thing. Well, I mean, she's been corrupt since 92? Yeah. When Bill was elected? And now it's just getting that much worse. I mean, she made, what, $21 million from speaking to different banks and Wall Streeters? Yeah. Well, do you think a lot of those, uh, quote, speaking fees were kickbacks for deals? I think anyone who doesn't is naive. Now listen, Hillary Clinton, I didn't vote for you in 08. I voted for Obama because he wasn't you. You know what? You're a liar. You're a cheat. We don't raise our children to act this way. And you're going to further it? You got super delegates that you bought before the election? I'm in Michigan, Hillary. We uncrowned you, you fracking queen. And I'm going to tell you what. All you super delegates that are standing behind you in Michigan, the finger isn't on them when it comes August and November to vote. We're voting you out. We're going for a new Congress. You don't win anything because we're not going away. Our job is just beginning, and our job is to shut you down. F you, Hillary Clinton. And all day I've noticed a disconnect between Bernie supporters and Hillary Clinton. I haven't, I've, I've interviewed probably nearly a dozen people so far at several different protests. I had not one of them told me they were going to vote for Hillary. No. No. I haven't found, the only Hillary supporters I've found here is CNN. Um, the CNN, and that's, I probably shouldn't say that, that's kind of mean, actually. Um, but I haven't run into any Hillary supporters either. So what do you think about Hillary Clinton's support for TPP? I, I think it's phony. Basically, she called it the gold war of trade agreements, and now during the campaign, she flip-flopped to try to keep up with Bernie Sanders. Uh, it, 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 she, she'll pass it. it. They're going to try to pass it through uh, after November between her and, and then. If they don't pass it then, I'm sure she's going to make a good excuse to pass it. I don't trust her. I'm not voting for her. Uh, simple as that. I'm not voting corporation. Hillary cheats. Now, the last couple of weeks, she's not up in double digits against Trump. She's into two or four points. Or losing. She is losing, or losing in swing states, which has not happened in decades. They'll support Jill Stein. Some of them might go to Gary Johnson, some of them might go to Stein, but I would say 80% of them are not voting for Hillary. If they want to anoint that little effing whatever she is, we're going to lose to Trump, and it's on them. The games that they played and what they have done to us, good luck in November. You don't have our vote, you don't have our money, and Trump's going to flatten you like a pancake, Hillary. David Knight for InfoWars.com. Now, we're walking by, by this merchandising place, and we had even delegates talking about these, the difference between these two pictures. You see the way Hillary is portrayed out here very majestically 
and kind of a communist propaganda mode. But look at what they did to Bernie's picture. I mean, he looks kind of like uh, a cross between Bernie Sanders and uh, Mickey Mouse, the way they drew his nose out and <laughs> the low part of his face. I mean, it's, it's one of the worst caricatures I've ever seen of him. A striking contrast, but that's what we're seeing more of here at the delegation. And of course, just uh, this afternoon, Bernie Sanders gave his first speech, and as he was encouraging his supporters to support Hillary Clinton, he was booed by his own supporters. Because this is about more than one man. This is about whether or not we're going to have honest and open elections or whether we're going to allow the party establishment of both parties to try to rig this process. And of course, that didn't happen with the Republicans because Donald Trump shut them down. But that hasn't happened here with the Democrats. Interesting contrast. It says it all right here in these images of the merchandise. David Knight for InfoWars.com. Rob Dew with Infowars.com reporting just outside Independence Hall, and we ran in, if we're in the park over here, James O'Keefe, master confronter, master hidden camera artist, just really an activist taking it to the next level. And you had a confrontation this morning, so tell us all about it. Yeah, we, we caught this uh, Hillary delegate on tape, Mary Bayer is her name, and she says on hidden camera, she's a delegate for Hillary Clinton, she says, the way to the way to ban all guns is to tell people that you want common sense gun legislation. And she says, quote, if you just say, expletive like that, people will buy into it, unquote. So we found her at the convention, we confronted her, she took my sign, grabbed it, started crying, running into the building, the cops were chasing her to get the sign, and uh, I, I gave you guys that video. This is the quote from the video. Okay. No, 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 no. Can I see this? Yeah, you, you, uh, excuse me, hey, you take my, that's my property, she took my property, she took my property, she took my property, she took my property. That's my property. That's my property. The delegate took my property. Officer, she took. She has my sign. The whole thing. Oh yeah, it's on. It's on YouTube. It's on Alex Jones right now. Who is Alex Jones? He's a journalist, and I'm James O'Keefe on the Project Veritas. And so, can you explain what your point of all of your organization? It's to expose the truth and expose lies and corruption from people like you. So you're saying I'm totally lying? You did. It's on video. What is my lie? You said. Quote, you gotta say you want common sense gun legislation, you say shit like that, and people buy well, what did somebody say to me? Unquote. You say that? Wait, was this like said, four years ago or something? He said, how do you ban guns? And he said, you explain how to do it. If you guys want to talk about this, I'm sorry. The hotel is in July for the videotaping in here. It's on the tape. I'm going to need some context to defend myself. So James, how do you think it's possible she doesn't even know who Alex Jones is? Well, I don't know. She she was so flabbergasted. She was emotional. She was running through the lobby. She was saying that, that you had to, that's my picture. That's that's my word. She just couldn't believe that she was on tape, and she was denying what she was. She was in a state of complete denial and about that it. She was being confronted over her own words. Yes, and she is a delegate for Clinton, and she's describing. She doesn't know she's being filmed, but she described how they're going to get all the guns banned, and she's lying to the American people. Exactly. Now, I like what you have. You have a shirt on here that says, I'm secretly recording yes. you, and a hat. This is one way to get away from the two-party consent, which is in Pennsylvania. In yes. Cleveland, it was one-party consent. So my lawyer said, you know, you got to let people know you're filming them in Pennsylvania. So here I have the shirt. Project Veritas, I am secretly recording you. That way everyone, everyone's got the consent. I can film everyone. There's no problem. There's no legal issues in Pennsylvania, which is a two-party consent state to tape. Now, if you are in public spaces, you can film people uh, secretly because there's no perception of privacy. So just keep in mind the laws out there because they are different from state to state. James, do you have anything else you want to add? I would just say... One by one, we're going to expose all the people, all the delegates, and this is the hashtag to catch a delegate, and uh, follow us on uh, projectveritas.com. All right, you heard here at Infowars.com, hashtag to catch a delegate. This is Rob Drew reporting for Infowars.com and Infowars Nightly News.
Jackson. Tonight they're going to have uh, families who have been talking about uh, uh, that have been killed by police. Uh, but from what I understand, they're not going to have any uh, families of policemen who have been killed. What, what are your comments about that? I wish we could share the pain of both. Uh, because those who were shot unarmed did nothing to be killed. And the police were shot unarmed did nothing to be killed. That must be some common commitment to stop the killing. I think that for a season, from Trayvon Martin to Michael Brown to Diallo, these blacks were killed by police. And the killing of police by people, by two veterans, I might add, uh, is a recent thing. But I hope that can be an appreciation the pain and unnecessary loss of both sides. Do you think that uh, they should have the, them speak? Do you think they should have had someone from the uh, families that have just recently had the, the, late, the most recent shootings in Dallas? They make they may make that adjustment. I hope that they will. Okay. Thank you. All right, David Knight for InfoWars.com. That was Jesse Jackson here on the floor of the Democrat National Convention. We're here at the convention, and i talking to a Bernie delegate. Your name is, sir? I'm Charles Powell from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Well, I see you're a Bernie delegate. I also see you're against the TPP. Tell me how you feel about uh, how the convention's proceeding so far. Well, I don't like it that uh, they didn't um, uh, recommend that the um, TPP not be voted on um, um, be before the next election. We think that the lame duck Congress should not uh, uh, vote on the TPP and to give new, the new Congress a chance to, uh, to think it over. Um, so we're disappointed that uh, it doesn't look like it's going to go that way. But um, they didn't allow the mi minority report on the TPP. And um, we're still hoping that we can uh, at least force them to hear the minority report. Do you think there's any interest in hearing uh, opposition to TPP based on Hillary Clinton's vice presidential pick of Kane, who is very supportive of it and all the trade agreements? Well, she has, you know, indicated that uh, she thinks that uh, we should be um, cautious about the TPP. And, of course, Bernie uh, was uh, strongly against the TPP. And so... Um, there are both uh, Bernie delegates and Hillary delegates that are opposed to TPP. So hopefully we, as a, a group, a unified group, can uh, do something about uh, stopping TPP. Well, we see Wall Street Journal and other sources rejoicing that Hillary Clinton has picked uh, Kane as her vice president because he is uh, so in it. Of course, she had supported it before she opposed it. And uh, now, uh, you know, at, at least Wall Street believes that it's a done deal. It well, it certainly doesn't look good. So it's reason for concern. But um, uh, I haven't given up yet. I, I still have high hopes, and uh, there are others that feel that way. And we think if we can at least force the minority report to be heard. We're here just outside the convention floor as the delegates are about to go in. We're going to be starting in about 45 minutes. And we had a delegate come over to us, saw our equipment, and uh, he was a Bernie supporter. He was very upset about what's going on. We asked him to uh, speak to us on record. He said, well, tomorrow or after we do the roll call vote, uh, I'll, I'll talk to you about it. He doesn't want to get thrown off the floor before the roll call vote. But we're going to have a lot of people uh, talking to us, I'm sure, because they're very upset about this. You know, you have to understand, this is not simply about Bernie Sanders, just like 2012 wasn't about how the Republicans defrauded Ron Paul. Ultimately, it's about the system itself. Are we going to have a corrupt system? It looks like the delegates here and the, and the Democrat uh, convention are fine with keeping the superdelegate system that was so rigged. Remember, she started out with 15% of the votes that she needed to win. And then you, another way of looking at that is that if you go state by state, in every one of the states, she had about 10 to 15% of the delegates as superdelegates already on her side. Each of those states were proportionately allocated. So that meant that for Bernie to even break even on delegates, he had to beat her by 10 to 15%. And he couldn't get ahead of her unless he got ahead of that 10 or 15% threshold. That's what we continually saw. That's why state by state, you would look at it and say, well, wait a minute. He beat her by a pretty good margin here, 7, 8, 10%, but she got the same number of delegates or more in most cases of uh, the states where he won. They do not want to change that system. 
as they have deposed uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, or as we call her, Debbie Wasserman Schill, they've uh, moved her out. First it was just going to be she wasn't going to speak. Then they said she's going to be resigning altogether. But now they're talking about the fact she's going to open the convention and close the convention. So we'll have to see what's going to happen with that and see what the crowd reaction is to it. And of course, as we pointed out, we were on with Alex Jones earlier, the rebellion that they were expecting, that they tried to play up at the GOP never really happened. But there truly is a grassroots rebellion outside the convention here. It remains to be seen if that's going to bleed on into the convention with the delegates. But based on the person that we talked to, it looks like that may very well be the case. And we'll be talking to a lot of them after the roll call vote, I'm sure. For InfoWars.com, I'm David Knight. The Hillary Clinton campaign, uh, they really need those Bernie Sanders supporters to get on board if she's going to win the uh, presidential race. Uh, Remember Leah Daughtry, the CEO of this convention, is now getting ready to speak. She's walking up to the microphone. David Knight for InfoWars.com, and we're talking to? Brian Ertz, Idaho. All right, I see this. Uh, stop the TPP on here. Tell people why you're opposed to the TPP. Uh, I'm opposed to corporate, corporate sovereignty of 40% of the world's economy. I think that people in democratic processes should uh, be able to regulate industry uh, in ways for the public interest. And what TPP does is, is it removes government and democratic uh, processes from the ability to regulate industry uh, when it comes to globalized markets. In a word, what it does is remove our sovereignty, right? Absolutely. What it does, it takes uh, takes the governance of our economy out of our hands and hands it over to people, many of whom never maybe even been to our country, right? They haven't been to our country. Uh, they don't represent us. They represent corporate interests. Uh, and there are a lot of fundamental problems uh, with TPP. And yeah. So tell me, are you a delegate here at this uh, convention? No, I'm a member of the Rules Committee. Um, so I deliberated last Saturday. Okay. And uh, how do you feel about the fact that uh, Kane has been picked as a VP on this because he's uh, supported all these trade deals? It's a kick in the teeth to the progressive wing of the Democratic Party. Do you believe Hillary Clinton when she said, you know, first she came out in support of these, then she said she was against them, then she picked Tim Kane? What do you, how, where do you think she stands on this? Uh, I have no doubt that Hillary Clinton, at the most, may rebrand TPP, uh, but she. I believe she's in support of TPP, absolutely. And of course it's not just TPP, of course, we have the TTIP, and there's anything that's coming up down the road because of the Trade Promotion Authority, which Kane was an ardent supporter of, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Well, thank you very much, uh, but you're not a delegate, so, uh, uh, but, but thank you for talking to we, us. We yeah. made the rules. Uh, yeah. We, we oh, tried oh. to give them every avenue to get TPP back on the floor. Uh, they shut us down. Oh, I have another question for you. Sure. All right, you're on the Rules Committee. What about the superdelegates? Did they do anything to change that? Oh, I saw that that was shut down as well. Any efforts to try to reform that? It was shut down several times. The committee was for the cameras. Uh, uh, the decision was made before the committee even convened. Uh, and basically, both campaigns made the decision, asked us to ratify the decision. Uh, it's a commission. It's unenforceable. Uh, it's an advisory commission. Uh, so basically, it's going to ask the superdelegates to uh, remove their own power eventually, sometime down the road. Uh, the Sanders campaign uh, characterized it as being having teeth uh, and being substantive. Uh, they, the language says otherwise. Okay. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. David Knight for InfoWars.com. And of course, you can see that the fix is in. As he pointed out, it was simply for the cameras. Uh, they had already decided what they were going to put in there. It was a show meeting for the Rules Committee. David Knight for InfoWars.com.